Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, today we are going to be making that amazing Italian dish, porchetta. Now, porchetta traditionally is made with a whole loin and belly, left whole, and obviously stuffed and rolled. But a whole loin and belly, you're looking at 10 kilos and above, it's a hell of a lot of meat. So what I've got then is I'm using some beautiful belly pork. Now this piece weighs about a kilo and a half. It's out the middle, it's on the bone. So first thing I wanna do is just quickly nip out that bone. Now porchetta, it's basically a pork roll stuffed with herbs, garlic, salt and pepper. Uh, quite a few variations, people add some citrus, people add some chili flakes, I'm going to keep it quite simple, but what I've got for mine is a very, very luxurious ingredient, it is called fennel pollen. Now fennel pollen comes from the, obviously the flower of the fennel plant, if I can get into it, I've got greasy hands, <laughs> I mean Fennel, really easy to grow at home, and fennel pollen is not too difficult to harvest, but the yield is very, very low. Now this stuff is about as expensive as it gets. One gram will cost you one pound. So there's a thousand grams in a kilo, a thousand pound a kilo. You know, it's up there pretty much with saffron and Colombian marching powder. Now I've got five grams here, it cost me five quid, but it's absolutely amazing stuff. You can smell it through the bag, you know, and it's got that aniseed taste, but it goes really, really well with pork. Right then, so I've got my pork, I've got the bone out, we're going to butterfly that in a moment. Next, I want to build up my herb blend. So what we've got then? is some lovely fresh cloves of garlic, some beautiful fresh sage and some rosemary. They are the staples of any porchetta, the trinity there. I'm going to add some thyme. So what I need to do then is very quickly strip all this of its stalks and then chop the whole lot into a beautiful fine blend. Now, this is not the best time I've ever had. So, because it looks a bit force grown, it's a bit limp is the word I'm looking for. I'm not too worried about putting a little bit of the very soft stalk in. Okay then, it's just a case of getting in there and starting to chop these nice and fine. Just going through them preliminarily and then we can start mixing them all together and really going for it and you want it as small as you can get it get it mixed together so my herb mixture is nice finely chopped the garlic, you can do it by hand. I'm gonna cheat in my back pocket. Yeah, I know. Garlic crusher. Right, next I am going to concentrate on this piece of meat. Now, normally you would just line it with your herb mix and your garlic and fold it over and tie it. But what I wanna do is I wanna get a little bit more out of this so with a decent knife we are just gently going to carefully following one of those natural seams of the meat just butterfly it out slightly and I think the final presentation when you've got that spiral with all your herbs in would look fantastic I'm happy with that. Okay, it's that easy. 
Now, what we need to do then is get some oil. I'm using Great British Rapeseed Oil, only a little bit. Just a bit. And then just massage that oil in. Easy as. Now this is the trick, a liberal sprinkling of salt, a real decent sprinkling of salt, and again with some nice cracked black pepper that's building up that base nicely, and then we will get our garlic on. So as you can see there then, I've got six cloves. Just going to again, evenly distribute it. Just spread it out. Then we're going to add our herby mix. Now some people will fry off some onions and add some breadcrumbs. I mean, you can really go for it but try and stick to the traditional recipe. You know, you, want, you don't want to go too fancy. It's basically herbs, garlic, salt, and pepper. Okay, there's my herbs in there, nice and fresh. Next, the fennel pollen, a pound a gram. So I'd say there was 50p. Of course, fennel pollen, porchetta. Always think of that amazing butcher, Dario Ciccini. This is right up his street. Okay, so we're just going to press that in and then just with, with my microplane, just a little bit of lemon zest. Not too much. And then we're going to tie it up, score the skin, and get it in the oven. There we have it. It really, really couldn't be easier. So, we're going to try and turn this round. Now you watch. And then just fold it up. Give that a wipe, give that a wipe, and there you have it nearly ready for the oven. So I'm just going to score it, it's not too deep. I mean you could always, if you were thinking right, score it before you did it. But hey ho, that's the way I roll baby. So that's scored nicely. Now I'm just going to put a few strings around that to hold its shape while we roast it off. But it's looking and smelling oh, amazing. So one in the middle then. That butcher's knot, I'm using the holding knot again so I don't squish out all the insides. Again, I will put the link to this knot in the description. Nice, not too tight. We just want to hold it up. So there she is then, the SRP Porchetta, ready for the oven. Now a quick tip. One of the best things for scoring pork is a Stanley knife. Absolutely brilliant. You just put the tip out like that and you can see how good that is. Nice and safe. And a lot of butchers use these in the shop. They are just the best bit of kit. Buy yourself a new one. Keep it in your kitchen knife drawer. Keep it clean. And it's a great way of scoring your pork. Right then, so I'm going to get plenty of salt 
into the skin. That is the secret of pork crackling. I know people put hot water over it. People put olive oil over it. But the thing is, it's all about how dry the pork is. Plenty of salt to dry the moisture out. And then get it in the oven on a very high heat just to start it off. So I'm going to put it in a tray just with a little trivet of veg. I've only got onions, but you could use carrots. It's only to hold it up out the pan, to be honest, so we get an even cook. And then with that, a little spot of water just in the bottom. And then, like I said, a really high heat. I'm gonna put this in at gas mark eight, and I should put the conversion up there for about 25, 30 minutes, and then turn it down and do it nicely low and slow. I mean something like this on the barbecue, on the grill, on the rotisserie, absolutely perfect. Right, in the oven it goes. So my little beauties, onto the best bit. There she is, a thing of wonder. Now the total cooking time for this was four hours. Like I said, gas mark eight for 30 minutes. It starts off that crackling, beautiful and then I turned it down to gas mark three, look up there again for the conversion, and I cooked it for another three and a half hours. But just look how good that is. See if I can get the microphone, see if you can hear this crackling. Okay, that is what it's all about. Oh. So my friends, you know the drill by now, when you roast any meat, you need to rest it let it relax let all the juices go back in so i'm just going to lightly tuck that with some foil and leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes then it's the money shot all righty then my favorite part let's cut into this beautiful thing Pretty impressive hey just have a look at it have a look at this first I'm gonna have a taste of this man alive I mean I absolutely love belly pork just look at how juicy that is in there can you see it and the crackling as you can hear Mmm, it's otherworldly. It's missing one thing. Oh my God. Well, that is heavenly. Absolutely beautiful. And if you've liked what you've seen here today on the Scott Reed Project, please click subscribe. You'll see my head come up here in a moment. Also, please go onto my channel. I should put the link up here. I've got a vast back catalogue. Also, find me on my social media on Facebook, Scott Reed, and the Scott Reed Project, and on my Twitter at the Scott Reed Project. But until next time, I'm just going to take this somewhere and spend a bit of time on my own. Look at that crackling. Oh man, unbelievable. Listen. See you again.